right, MMA Acts, it's time once again for another installment of Split Decision. This is your MMA podcast brought to you weekly here from the KOA Studios. That is Knockout Artist Clothing, of course. You're going to visit them at the uh, the official KOA.com. You're going to. You have to. You must. Go there. Check out the uh, the clothes, the threads they have. They fit fighters, fight fans, and fight personalities alike. You need to go check out what they have. They have some uh, kick-ass clothes that I want to get more of. To be honest with you, uh, so go see them, and then of course go see Fight Fans Radio Network. They uh, have Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes, and we have uh, SplitDecisionMMA.com, right? Yes. SplitDecisionMMA.com. Go there. You can download the podcast there or from Fight Fans Radio Network. Bueller and Dodge reporting in again from the KOA Studios, and we have news, we have recaps, we have a preview of next. Our jeez, tomorrow's tomorrow. fight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's fight. It's all going down right here. We got to get through it quick because Dodge has to go to work. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Someone's got to get paid. <laughs> so what is happening in the wide world of MMA? Oh, by the way, uh, did we get uh, Michael McDonald up? Uh, it'll be up. Okay, be so a uh, crap ton of interviews <laughs> that are going up. There's so many interviews going up. We basically interviewed the entire fight card for UFC on Fox Sports Nine. I actually turned down Michael McDonald since we already interviewed him twice. That would have been ridiculous. <laughs> so what's changed since last week? <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast? <laughs> uh, no, so uh, actually we, we did a three in one day and then two in one day. Um, Uriah Faber, Joseph Benavidez, uh, help me out here Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson. Chad Mendez. Chad Mendez. Joe Lauzon. Joe Lauzon. And then, of course, we had Michael McDonald live in the studio. The one that you saw on Road to the Octagon, if you want to see what the full interview was like, we'll have that posted as well. So just go seek it out. But now it's time to jump into the news. Uh, looks like we're starting off with Cormier versus Evans. His official UFC 170 main event. Beautiful. I have, again, I still want to see this fight. You said you didn't necessarily want to see this fight? It, it, Cormier wants to get into the 205 division. He's going to have to do something impressive. And I guess Rashad Evans is the best person to welcome in, him into it at this point in time. Yeah, two, two wrestlers with decent hands. I think it could be a pretty interesting fight. I think or that, do you think it's just going to go to like old school college wrestling and then just going to wrestle I think, I think Cormier is going to kill Evans. Yeah? Is that's going to knock him out? It's entirely possible. Got heavier hands? Might machine to him, yes. All right. Absolutely. So Rousey has now uh, been featured in Time Magazine for... 30 people under 30 changing the world. Mm, changing the world. One arm bar at a time. <laughs> Making them bitchier. One, one, <laughs> well, I, I gotta, one, I mean, one like, bitch fest at a time. I mean, they definitely, you know, obviously she's the first woman to sign with the UFC. Uh, first UFC women's champion. One of the first women coaches. This is good for MMA. Yes. Uh, this is definitely it's definitely good for MMA. It, it puts uh, the sport that we all love on the front pages of a big magazine. But Ronda Rousey's still a bitch and shouldn't be <laughs> featured in something like this. But you know, whatever. Wow. It's cool. It's cool. No, it's all good. It's fine. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> <laughs> this is all, all day, all day. Uh, also going on down on that UFC 170 card, we're gonna have Damian Maya up against Rory McDonald. God, Damian Maya luckily has has found some hands along the way so this could actually be an interesting fight if you would ask me a year ago i would be very disappointed in this but damian my has been working on his stand-up so well that it could be could be a good fight rory mcdonald also at the same time as damian maya has has risen up a little bit and kind of you know, come up to the occasion right rory mcdonald has shown that he is not a showstopper like we all thought he was going to be no he is basically i'm going to win by grappling you to death but he can't just do that. doing just doing enough to win the fight. I don't think he can do that, Damian Maya. I think he's going to be the newest GSP since GSP is walking away. We'll get, we'll to, that get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> That's big news. March fifteenth. I can't even. I can't even. UFC one seventy one. My mind right now. Hector Lombard is going to be fighting Jake Shields. I am scared for Jake Shields. Hector Lombard is a beast. I know you, with some I, of the heaviest hands I've seen in a long time. I know you have a Hector it's, Lomboner, but especially uh, going down to one seventy, <laughs> you have such a boner for Hector Lombard. <laughs> uh, Jake Shields, though, at the same time, does not have the stand up that Hector Lombard does. So yeah, this Jake is, Shields has way worse stand up. That's what I'm saying. It's, the, it it's horrible. It's stand-up. not even. It's not even on the same level. It's not remotely close. Uh, so this is this is probably a bad matchup for Jake Shields. But his wrestling is better. Yeah, it's true. So is he going to do the thing where he his just... His leg kicks are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> is he just going to grind out Lombard? Uh, if Lombard hits him, though, he's going down. Jake Shields is going down. There's so many fights where that could happen that it doesn't. Right. And, and if, for example, the fight I'm sure we're going to get to later with the news of GSP leaving, yep. there's that's a fight where that could happen. But is it going to? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, Dana White says after UFC 168, if 
Silva wins and retains the title, he will have he will bring together the Roy Jones Jr. Anderson Silva boxing match that Anderson Silva has been wanting for a long time. So where is this going to happen in the cage or where where is it going to happen at? I don't. It's going to be a boxing match. So so it has to be. It has to be in, a in ring. the squared circle. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to co-promote with another promotion. I don't know if they're going to build a UFC ring. <laughs> For well, they, they own down, Pride. Like, they should just bring back the Pride ring, the bigger, the bigger boxing ring. Just bring it in. Yeah, bring, why not? Why not? That would be. I think people would actually enjoy seeing the old Pride ring for a boxing match. I think that you would get the 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 old MMA fans like us that would see that come out just for one match, and we'd be very excited about it. It could that could boost some serious buys, but at the same time, uh, I don't. I didn't understand the contingency on the the if he wins. Yeah, I, I don't know. So if he doesn't win, there's no boxing match. I'm, I'm sure Anderson Silva's going to talk him and give it to him. What else is he going to do? That's a fair point. <laughs> he is. At, what, but then you have Anderson Silva on two losses. Going to fight and, and, Roy yeah, Jones? Who, who cares? Who knows? <laughs> so we have some new black belts in the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Frankie Edgar got his black belt from Ricardo Alameda. Okay. Surprising. Uh, we have Miles Jury got his black belt um, from Don Richard. And... Don Richards is like my elementary school teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he teaches MMA. Now he teaches it just, sa- it just sounds like a guy who teaches math and in seventh grade. And Paul Walker got his black belt. Oh. <laughs> wow. By, Ricardo, really? For, by his trainer. Really? Ricardo you got Miller. There. Okay. Hey, I'm just saying, I don't understand. Way too soon. It's No. It's, it, I think it it's way too late. It hurts to see <laughs> that picture. <laughs> I didn't know Paul Walker was a brown belt. He was a brown belt. But the thing that I don't get is I like that his coach said, well, I know he'll reach it one day. So this is in his memory. I know he'll reach in one day. Grappling angels. <laughs> I thought he was a blue belt. Because they said that That's what I'm part saying. of him blew over there. And he blew a tire. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get somebody in a halo hold. And then it's all over. <laughs> Once so that even, happens. Even more sad news, obviously. Shane wow! Just, just throwing it out I'm there. I'm getting it down now, and then we'll go back up. We'll bring it back up. We'll bring it back up. <laughs> way, to, way to bring the room down. I know. Well, that's his sporting partner, bro. <laughs> Shane Del Rosario has, oh, now, oh, really? has passed away. Wow. Has passed away. Wow. If you didn't hear that, I'm not repeating it. Just go back and turn your volume up. That's just, that's just wrong. Uh, yeah, Shane Del Rosario. We, we After broke this, two weeks. Yeah, we broke this last week. There was a lot of rumors going around that said that he was on the up and up, and apparently his camp said no. These are not legit rumors. It's not good, and it's very sad that Shane Della Rosario, Rosario has passed away. I mean, so suddenly in, in a heart attack at thirty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For a guy who was an athlete and supposed to be in, yeah, in, he was supposed to be in, shape, in good getting shape. checked by the the doctors constantly, obviously to be able to fight. I don't know why I'm still alive at this point. If that know. happens, did they ever? Did they I ever should have been dead at twelve. It Just say it was massive cardiac arrest. <laughs> but they didn't. They, they're going to have to run for their tests and autopsies Find and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if this, if this is the standard. I should have been dead at 12. I'm just saying. It's... So let's bring it back up. Bring it back up. In Russia at the Maxim Bar in Moscow, we had Frank Mir and John Jones. But is this is this a, legit? No, it's they're playing around. They're like laughing and goofing around, and somebody obviously sped it up very fast. <laughs> Because I saw this online, and I never followed I think, up on it. I think Mir could be the light heavyweight champion now. I mean, just watching that, he got him to the ground. He <laughs> teabagged he tea him. <laughs> he was, he yeah. was setting him down, you know what I mean? I, he I, got I, him out at the end. That's four points. Yeah, that's, that's four that's, <laughs> And I mean, that was a teabagging if I ever seen one in my life. Mind you, was pretty quick. I mean, John Jones gave up his back right in the beginning. I don't understand what that was about. Some kicks, exchanged some punches. Oh, he tried for a guillotine. Slabs. He lost it. Wait, you got he's past guard. Angles there. past guard, and then mount, mount at the very end. That's and that's definitely good four for point. Frank Mir. Yeah, yeah, Frank Mir wins. <laughs> Your new light heavyweight champion, <laughs> Frank Mir. So Brad Pickett and Ian McCall, since Ian McCall is out of his fights coming up tomorrow, he will now face Brad Pickett in London at UFC thirty, UFC Ultimate Fight Night thirty seven, March eighth. What do you think, Brad Pickett making his flyweight debut? You know, Ian McCall is so uh, hit and miss. It's kind of it's kind of hard for me to think that he. Is, is going to be super confident in this fight. Uh, Brad Pickett, though, coming down on weight, making his debut, it's it, it's actually a good fight for both of them, yeah. honestly. Because now Could they be can... fight of the night. Both these guys always come and bring it. You know, most, I think they're pretty sure they've both won at least fight of the nights before. I know I know. Um, Ian McCall has three, and I think... Really? I think... Uh, I didn't know Ian McCall had three Pickett has nights. four. What? Really? I know Pickett has at least four, guaranteed. Damn. I would, I'd kill for one. <laughs> awesome. 
So another uh, women woman in MMA that is making um, some big waves is Holly Holm. She's former pro boxer. Um, yeah. She is now six and zero in MMA. Her coach and manager, excuse me, manager and promoter came up and said, "Sorry, my daughter was adamant that I wear her rainbow bracelet while I do the podcast. Okay, so I put it back make on. sure you put it back on. Yeah. Um, that she her her manager said, or, yeah, her manager and promoter said that she would not." Not going to the UFC. She already turned down a contract with them. Unless she's going to get six figures in an yeah. immediate fight with Ronda Rousey. Yeah, that's uh, th- what do we know about Uncle Dana? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you don't you don't throw on demands like this. All you're gonna do is piss them off and end up in World Series of Fighting or in Vitiga. Or she wasn't. In, she, Invicta, was, sorry. she was in Bellator. She yeah, did well Bell, there. What are you, Bellator? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> she was in Bellator's Women MMA. Yeah, but she's she's also got the magic stuff. <laughs> she got the magic stuff. She yeah. she has the same record that. Ronda Rousey came into the UFC with six and zero. That's that's fine. The thing, the difference is Dana she was is. he was blown away by Ronda Rousey and how quick she was finishing right. fights and and her arm bars and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't heard Dana mention anything about this chick and the way that he acts when people make demands of him. She, she has the same thing that Dana came into. She looks scary. She, she has the thing that Dana loves to come into. But wow, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, so wait, wait, so. But did Ronda Rousey make demands when she joined the UFC? No, she was honored to be nope. the first woman signed to the UFC. This chick's making demands. When you make demands of Uncle Dana, Uncle Dana does not respond well. <laughs> she's, she's currently she's currently uh, signed with Legacy FC, so let's see how she continues to do there first. She'll end up in it. Invicta for a little bit and then maybe work her way up to the UFC. There's no way they're going to sign her for an immediate title shot. Unless they, unless they run dry on contenders. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> UFC has announced. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where else you want me to go with that. You're right. I don't know. All right. We're moving on to further women's <laughs> MMA. Can I continue about women's MMA? No. <laughs> no. Let's back up and fight about this more. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. I'm sorry. It's not normal. It's not at all. It's never normal. All right. The UFC has decided once again. We were talking about this the last, I think, two shows. They are going to make another women's weight class. They are going to go with the straw weight, the 115 pound right. division. They have. Purchased contracts from Invicta, eleven fighters. They've taken Carla Esparza. Is this like a sex slave trade thing? Claudia. Is this <laughs> Felice? Felice Herring. Is this Herring, legal? Duran Calderwood, Tarek Torres, Rose uh, Namhanjanas, Beck Hyatt, Elamie Kagan, Alex Chambers, Julian Lima, Paige Van Zant, which yes. is our KOA sponsor's favorite fighter. I'm just. Say- I'm just saying. <laughs> I've seen PSAs on this shit. I don't know if this is legal. <laughs> you can't just buy women. <laughs> Uh, what's pretty crazy is is now they also that same day announced season twenty of the Ultimate Fighter will be all women, all in the one hundred and fifteen pound weight class. There are five open slots left, so if you have any women out there that think they can have what it takes, go uh, try to get into the show. How many of these eleven are in that show? All of them. All of them immediately got dumped into this show. So I and mean, that's that was probably the contingency. They he had to buy their contracts for them to be in that show. Check this out though. The winner of this show will be the first ever 115-pound champion. They are not going to get contract. They all have contracts. This is going to be a tournament for wow. the championship. Wow. So they're kind of borrowing from Bellator at this point. Yeah, or you know, season four where they had old vets come uh, in and, yeah, and get a title true. shot. And I that's bet true. every one of these chicks will make weight every fight. Yep. <laughs> and and so so the UG is on fire for this. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, because apparently somebody from the UG came up with this this game plan. And uh, I'm, putting, I'm, have, I'm putting quotes up. People have uh, talked about it for a while. That yeah. They need to do an all women. First of all, all women's, you know, um, an all women's ultimate fighter, not just a men's and women's. And then they said, you know, what we could do is it could introduce a new weight class by having a, a champion be a So the if I had a vagina yes. and I was 115 pounds. Which you're nowhere near. He that said I could, if. That I, <laughs> You're sick. If he if he's 115 pounds, that was the if. The rest of it's okay. <laughs> so so then I could go on the show and compete for the belt, right? Yes. So you're saying I have a chance? Yes. <laughs> All right. You need to drop about 200 pounds. I'm sure. There's, <laughs> I'm sure there's a couple people in this room will give you a belt right now. <laughs> Woohoo! Here comes Captain Workout. I'm flipping a tire in my front yard. You're fat now. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> I asked you to do it with me. You said, no, I can't. I'm not going to drive to Eswan to flip a fucking tire. <laughs> you won't even do burpees in your house. No, I don't do anything. He won't even do burpees He's in the, the Spartan, Spartan run. run. <laughs> I like how you posted half of your medal because that's what you won. Oh. 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 Still half more than you got, my friend. Still half more than now. you got. For now. For now. <laughs> I'm getting all of them this year. Yeah, all of them. All. 
<laughs> Diego Sanchez find, signed a new eight fight contract with the UFC. Why the fuck would they offer him eight <laughs> fights? We get to see more yes cartwheels. Oh, this, <laughs> this is somebody fucked up in the shop somewhere. <laughs> eight fights? Why? Yeah, because they gave him a fight for every two stitches he had took in his face. <laughs> That's insane. That is insane. Eight fights? I, I wouldn't sign him for three. I, I give him three. I want to see him fight Nate Diaz. I'd like to see him fight, uh, what's the Irish guy? Conor McGregor. Okay. And then whoever's left. Like, that wants to be Whoever's up. left. Whoever wants like to be Like I said, yeah. I wouldn't give him three. I'd give him two. <laughs> okay, two. He's going to lose those two and then kick his ass out. It, it, you still might. Remember, they can buy your... Just because you get a contract doesn't mean they can't buy That's it out. That's a good point. That's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cain Velasquez is out... Um, a year. A year. A due year. to his shoulder injury. He had to have surgery um, and for a torn labrum. What's a labrum? It's in your shoulder. I've gone into labrum. <laughs> My contractions are three minutes apart. <laughs> so the UFC has decided they don't want R- Verdum to sit around and wait for Cain Velasquez to come back. They would like him to fight the winner of Brown versus Barnett. For interim? No, just in okay. the meantime. Well, if it's a year, they have to go interim, right? I mean, that was the new rule. Yeah, but I think, okay, if you have this fight, and then you give the winner of that fight, what, three or four months, maybe five months to recover, and then fight Verdum, and then the winner of that will yeah. fight Kane when he gets back? So, Junior Santos and Kane Vasquez again? No, no, they no, no, they're saying Verdum against either Brown or Barnett. Junior Dos Santos is not getting an immediate title shot. I know, but he lost be, twice. You can't, yeah, you can't get smoked by the champ Verdum. twice. Can't be twice. What I don't understand is... Um, you know who else is going to beat Verdum? Fedor. <laughs> <laughs> that was luck. I, <laughs> so we have all, so I cried out, out, out of the fight tomorrow. Matt Brown, obviously, we talked about uh, is out due to injury. Right, he uh, has her, discs. herniated discs. He said he still wanted to fight, but he has to pull out of the fights. There is only two weeks to find another opponent. They did not find anybody. He still um, wanted to fight through it too. Definitely still wanted to fight. But that's easy to say when you already have the doctor telling you no. No, yeah. I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> if the doctor's like, no, you're not fighting, well, I'm going to tell him I am. So a little more to, news about tomorrow's to fight. Tough guy. Mac Danzig decided to have no sponsors. Really? I don't know why. Or he got no sponsors. Or he got no sponsors. That's actually probably more accurate. He said he didn't He didn't alert any of his sponsors he was going to do it. He's going to do everything on his own. He's making a statement with this fight. I do not have any other sponsors than my gym. You know he would he would be a great spokesperson for uh, you know for vegan living if uh, if he continued <laughs> he to win, win. honestly <laughs> uh, honestly it'd be great he's got to be he has to be on the list of like you know like vegan living's man of the year or something in the top one thousand I don't even know I, there was a vegan living because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man there's <laughs> I look first off I know <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know there's some kind of list for like vegan <laughs> athletes. I don't know enough about it because I eat steak. You but just at the know same about time. vegan living. All right, well, you know, <laughs> shut yeah, up. Tube <laughs> steak. <laughs> <laughs> so your question is getting around quite a bit, my friend. Oh God, damn it! Ariel Hawani asked him about the sex question. Did he punch him? He didn't punch him. All right. He said uh, he was wondering if he was surprised that the news is spread so wide and getting so much attention. Uh, Michael McDonald said yes and no. He says, I'm very proud of my abstinence. Uh, there was a time when it wasn't even in my vocabulary. I've lived on both sides of the fence. People ask, is it because of rig- religious beliefs, your athletic beliefs? Why do you do this? I found it a little uh, wow that people approached it and reacted to it the same amount as they said, you know, oh, I went three and a half years without food. Like you said, said wow, like Christopher Walken. I know. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm this just guy. saying that uh, <laughs> I got a fever. I got a fever for and any more the abstinence and uh, <laughs> just like you, <laughs> no more vagina. <laughs> so he said he's lived on both sides of the fence. He says, "I know God says, I know what God says, and I've decided that's what I'm going to do because God says it." I've lived on both sides of the fence. Now being on the side of the fence, I just see my life is better for it. What did it say on Bleacher Report? It said, if I see that son of a bitch, Joey Bueller, on the street, <laughs> yeah, really? me and him are going to settle this shit. I just, I just want to know what the fox says. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Uriah Faber's response to that, by the way, you got to go listen to the interview, but, but he, Uriah Faber pretty much was like, I, 
I couldn't do have that. as much sex as possible <laughs> before a fight. I think he started to tell us when the last time he had sex was too, because he said, "I." He's like, "I, I don't think I've waited as long as." Uh, and then he just like switched subjects. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he's got a girlfriend somewhere, <laughs> yeah, and he like, just <laughs> had sex last night, <laughs> and she would have done the math. Like, <laughs> so whenever you listen to the interview, don't put two and two together. It's like three different countries, man. Like yeah. Brazil. It, England. If you're out of the zip code, it doesn't count, right? It does not. It's it does true. not count. That's Especially right. out of the country. Definitely doesn't count. All right. So World Series of Fighting 7 happened. First ever event in Canada. Nice. You have the results there? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Sarnes Caleb did Starnes win, though. won with a KO. Good for him. I think he was running away and accidentally slipped and hit the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he ran so fast, he ran into him on the other end. <laughs> Flash. Ah. <laughs> Nick Newell defeated Sabada Fadai. Jesse Taylor defeated Elvis Mutapi Kick. I can't, what? There's too many, <laughs> too many consonants. <laughs> Nick Newell defeated Sabah Fadai by submission. Yeah. And then Caleb Sarnes, of course, by his, his running away elbow. And George. Yeah, say that first. Last Georgie? Name. Georgie. Caraca Canyon? Caraca Canyon. Yeah, there we go. Defeated Caraca Lan- Canyon. Defeated Lance Palmer, guillotine. It's Lance Armstrong's brother, by the way. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Have they tested him? The same shame name for the same first name. We're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's too confusing. It's too confusing. Dana White says he wants uh, Vitor Belfort to get the winner of Silva versus Weidman. I don't know what that's going to happen to Roy Jones Jr. if Silva wins. <laughs> because now Dana's booking two fights at once. So confusing. Unless, he, unless he's expecting uh, Weidman to win and he's going to have a fight Vitor, then just have Roy Jones Jr. fight Anderson Silva anyway, maybe on the same card. That'd be interesting. Hey, That'd be a lot of fun, actually. And this is kind of off topic, but since you're talking about Belfort, uh, he did a video with a church group mm-hmm. to keep people interested in church. Yeah, and he choked pr- the guy out. It's pretty good because they round up everybody who's not paying attention in church and Vitor kicks their ass. <laughs> <laughs> if you do not believe in the cheez it's I will beat you ass. <laughs> Guess the first testament all over again. <laughs> and obviously the biggest news we've got to talk about before we get into the recaps is George St. Pierre had a press conference today. Yeah. Uh, now yesterday they were, or excuse me, Wednesday they were talking about this on UFC Tonight. Erewhani thought he had the inside track. He was like, no, no, he's not going to announce anything. He's like, I was talking to him. It's just about sponsors. Yeah. Good for you, Ariel. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I'm glad you fell. We just took your job. <laughs> we just took your job. Um, he has announced that he is, take, he is basically having an indefinite retirement. From mixed martial arts. He is vacating his belt. He is walking away from the sport. He says he does not know when he will come back. He will come back, but he doesn't know. He says, 15 of my fights were for a world title. It's a lot of pressure. I've decided I need to take time off. I know the UFC is a business, and they can't wait for me. Or excuse me, for my little person. I love his broken English. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to be in a movie, and they're going to pay me with their money. (laughs) With their money. I'm Uh, not impressed with your free life. One day, when I feel like I will come, I feel like I'll come back. Right now, I need a break. I need to vacate my belt. And they keep asking him, you know, all this stuff. He's like, when I come back, he's like, I will not have red tape on my wrist. I'll have blue tape. I will be the challenger. I've never felt better physically. I just emotionally, I need this. I want to live out. You can't help but put a little bit of GSP in your accent. I have to. A normal life. (laughs) (laughs) But the pressure of competing, is that better for you? A little little further into it? (laughs) Go ahead. Knock yourself out, man. (laughs) I will keep training as a martial artist. (laughs) I think one day I will be back. I can't have time for a return as it would put pressure on me. So basically he's saying. So all of a sudden. He's content with his legacy. He wanted to do things he will be remembered for. He wanted to take the sport to the next level, which he has done. Dana White has said, absolutely, he's done all those things. That's great. Um, uh, he needs to be in it 100% emotionally and physically. If he's not going to do it, then he needs to go. What was it, three weeks ago, two weeks ago? Yep. When Dana White was like, ah, what he has weighing on his shoulders not that big of a deal. He's Apparently not. Anyway. He says that he, training for each and obsessing over each opponent has finally gotten to him, and he needs to just step away. I just think it's funny that Dana White is all of a sudden like, Oh, no, I totally agree with what he says. When a couple weeks ago, he was like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. He'll be back. We're, we have a definite rematch. Well, he says if he doesn't want to be there emotionally, I agree no. with him too. I, I think it goes farther than that. I go, this is just like John Jones's foot. I think that there's medical issues that nobody wants to talk about. I, I, I truly believe because I heard through the rumor mill that he also had CAT scans and brain scans. And then after that came... Yeah, he's I, not remembering shit. Well, I mean, he had long He doesn't periods. remember a whole fight. He doesn't right. remember whole periods of his day. Right. He drives around. He doesn't right. know how he got when, home. He thinks when you, he got abducted by aliens. I was going to say, <laughs> that's because of aliens. It has nothing to do with fighting. He obviously got probed. But, but I mean, when you sit down and you slide Uncle Dana pictures yeah. of somebody's brain with big dark spots in it <laughs> yeah. i mean he can't argue really with it. he can't he can't argue <laughs> with it and that's why he has to come out with statements you know like okay well 
Now I see. So, I see why he don't want to do it. They have announced March fifteenth, Dallas, Texas. Johnny Hendricks will be fighting Robbie Lawler for the vacant welterweight title belt. Sadly, this Carlos is Condit. They said is not going to be fighting Matt Brown. They're going to go a different route. And all he would say was, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure Nick Diaz is retired. This actually does open a lot of doors. Uh, sadly, Robbie Lawler <laughs> versus Hendricks is, is one of those fights that we were talking about earlier where it's like, oh, he has knockout written all over yeah. it. But they both have wrestling pedigrees, too. They do. And Robbie Lawler, we've seen knocked out by Nick Diaz. Yep. Who hasn't necessarily knocked out a lot of people. Nope. So it makes you question his chin. And... and Obviously, Johnny Hendricks can knock out virtually anybody. So, would Lawler really want to stand and bang? And when was the last time we saw his wrestling pedigree come into play? Um, I mean, he, he does well defensively. I mean, obviously, with Koscheck, he was able to shove off quite a bit of the takedowns. But he has to be offensive in this fight. But he does have to be offensive. But he was able to at least shove off takedowns. That's where I'm afraid. I think Johnny Hendricks is going to turn around and be possibly a new GSP himself. And, yeah, he's going to be going for the knockout. But when he feels in danger, he's just going to take everybody to the ground and grind him out because he's a good wrestler. Yeah. And I think that's what he's going to do with Lawler. He's not going to want to stand with Lawler who can knock him out. He wasn't afraid of GSP's power. He wasn't afraid well, of anybody why, else's well, power. Well, why would he be afraid of Robbie, Robbie Lawler's power? Because he has more power than him. Does he have more power than GSP? Yes. Yes. You think so? Yes. In a punch? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I think he's considerably has a, a yeah, strong heavier, punch. heavier hand. Definitely. A lot heavier definitely. hand than now, GSP. Now, okay. in volume, GSP. In more technical striking, GSP. But in knockout power, I think Hendricks and Lawler both have more power than GSP. Okay, that's a, that's fair enough. So to negate that, then Hendricks is going to try to grind him out. Yeah, so that's now, what I think is going to happen. I think the only positive thing that we really see out of this fight, assuming, let's go ahead and just assume. It reopens that up that, the welterweight division? Well, of course it reopens up the welterweight division that's been dominated for years. But aside from that, I think the only positive thing that we see from this fight is that, that we're going to see... If they don't go to striking, we're going to see what Robbie Lawler's wrestling is really like, yes. which we have never seen. Not in a long time. No. I mean, it's been it's been a freaking decade, yeah, damn near. Once here, he learned out, he could, he could hit hard. That's what he was going for. Exactly. So uh, that's the reason I like this matchup, because they're matching up two guys who are very similar, and the, one of them is going to have to be the best, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lawler has been on a major tear. Hendricks is... By some people's opinion, to the uncrowned champ. So this is going to be a. That's great the only fight. thing that upsets me about this whole GSP thing is I understand he's retiring and he says, "Look, my legacy is perfect. I went 15 title fights and I defended my belt. I mean, he defended his belt his last 10. You know what I mean? Like he's doing great. But to walk away from a fight that was so controversial and right. say I'm done, that's to me where it's a little tough for me to say. Yeah, his legacy is not going to be tarnished. But I mean, look at okay, look at Floyd Mayweather. If he walked away right now, his last fight wasn't controversial. Everyone's going to be like, yeah, he's one of the greatest boxers of all time. Look at his record. Mm. But if he somehow gets a butt whooping and wins his next fight and then says, you know what, I'm done, everyone's going to say, well, it's because you almost got beat and you don't want to get beat again. But I think even he's going to be he's going to be considered a champion who pick and choose who he fought. Agree. I don't think I don't think GSP would be. No, no, no. But I'm but Mayweather. Mayweather. Yeah, Mayweather, Mayweather for sure. Mayweather will be. But for you sure. understand what I'm saying? Like no, I see I, it. I, I, I see that. Away from such a controversial fight, it's people are going to be like. Maybe he's getting out because he knows he can finally be beat. And there's 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 plenty of people out there that are going to agree with that completely. Yeah. But the, the thing is, none of us, us here sitting in, in front of the microphones, you here listening at home, uh, other commentators, things that are involved in that, we we could not put ourselves in GSP shoes. No. None of us have, have been through. I mean, seriously, the guy, he's not kidding when he says he wants to live like a normal person. I can only imagine the kind of pressure he has on his a life. basis. Yeah. Plus, none of us know how many issues he had going into the Hendricks yeah. fight. And he keeps saying, he's like, he, he got, got abducted by aliens. He, keeps, <laughs> he already said that. He keeps saying, <laughs> he keeps saying, you can keep pressuring me and asking me and asking and prodding and prodding. He's like, I will not tell you about my personal life. I won't tell you what's going on, but it's very personal and I just, I'm having a hard time yeah. dealing with it. Well, you know what? I, I All I can say is, I remember years ago, I said it before on the show, uh, I remember when we watched him and we were like, he's the future of the division, yep. and he proved it. Yep. And I just, I hope that he can come back and do something later. Here's you know, my question. The final question about this whole thing is, if he comes back, does he get an immediate title shot? No. No. How long? Say it's six months. Would you give him an immediate title shot? Okay. I guess For time, his own safety, at it. least two fights. Okay. But if it's six months, would you give him his own title shot? Six months, I would. Two years, I would not. Uh, one year. That's questionable. One year, I'd at least make him fight one other person. Just for his own does safety. Does he get the number one contender or does he get a feeder fight? I Give him somebody in the top five, maybe, but I just for his own I mean, safety. That's what I'm saying. I, I, kinda, I wonder, I I'm, I'm trying to that. figure out where, where if, he, if he decides to come back, when he decides to come back, where do you put him? Does he immediately a top five? Does I think he get put at the time, bottom of the list? Time is, he, is he even on the list anymore? Uh, time is well, a huge it variable on the that. fighters who are in, Currently in, on yeah. the list, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be interesting yeah. to see. Time is a huge variable. Yeah. It's like Hoist Gracie came back to fight Matt Hughes. <laughs> oh God! But you know, so he was gone forever. Don't get me wrong. But this is this is a I very extreme example. But 
He was. He'd get submitted. He just wouldn't tap. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Hoist Gracie, when when Hoist Gracie yeah, left, <laughs> he's, he is the legacy of the UFC. He comes back and fights Matt Hughes. Yeah. He shouldn't have. That was a terrible idea on Hoist Gracie's part. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, GSP goes and and then the fight game evolves around him, and he's like, okay, I'm going to come back. Let's go ahead and have a shot at the champ. No, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> but if he's gone for six months. I can see that happening. I think I think Dana White would be pissed if it was only six months. <laughs> Seriously. I think we would all be pissed if it was only six months. But yeah, I think later, change you gotta, my mind. You gotta stick to, you gotta stick it's to the title. Still my belt, I changed my mind. <laughs> Even no, though he gave up the title, you gotta stick to the title rules. Yeah, if it's a year, sure. then then you're out. You have to fight to get back into the contention. If it's less than a year, you're still a contender. All right. I that's, don't see him coming back. I don't know. I don't think you. I don't. It's that's a never tough question. Do, I don't do even want to back? voice my opinions yeah. on this show. Well, I mean, just, I don't want to get in trouble. Later. It's just like the Chuck Liddell thing. You know, we heard rumor and we had people report to us that he can't even carry on a conversation right now. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know if it's medication or. Well, be, I saw or, his interview or, when he was on medication. That was bad too. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, I, but that I'm just was saying just cough syrup. <laughs> but I'm just saying <laughs> I mean, a night of drinking. <laughs> oh, uh, cough syrup. What if we re- <laughs> what? <laughs> Scissor, scissor. What if allegedly? You know, what if they revisit GSP in a year and the the guy can't walk, right? Or because right. the we don't brain know. injuries we don't go know. pretty quick. I, honestly, we did we did learn that our first case of puncher's dementia was with what Bob Sapp. Yeah. Uh, no, he's still fighting. <laughs> but he has puncher's dementia. Yeah. Gary Goodrich. Oh, Gary Goodrich. I'm sorry. Thank Gary you. Goodrich. Thank you. So Gary like Goodrich. Bob Sapp's still trying to get his last win before he retires. <laughs> That's what he says. He just wants one more win in MMA. Go fight a five-year-old. Get the can, fuck out of here. Seriously. Can, so, can they just go to, like, Dream... Or, you know, whatever organization, 1FC, and be like, look, we'll give you that guy right there that's staying there selling popcorn. Be, just beat him so we can give you your win and be done. Yeah. Two You're... midgets dressed like a full-size guy. <laughs> Will they stand on top of each other in the trench coat? That'd be great. Here, Bob Sapp, you get to that. fight Koji Yoshi. Go ahead. Uh, no, it's, it's it's but we are finding out more. It's, it's just like every sport. We find out more and more as the sport goes on. Uh, what kind of damage these these guys do yeah. entail? I mean, they've said a million times that USC or sorry, sorry, mixed martial arts is is safer than boxing, but at the same time, it was too young to make that decision. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and uh, and and now we're finding out like like Gary Goodrich has punches dementia, and we're going to see more and more fighters. He also come out. is just a kickboxer to start with, <sighs> right? Some of the underground stuff too that he was in, you know. Who, who knows? Who knows? Up. Never put his hands up. But Tank Abbott can still rock and roll all day, Drink man. Beers right. all night. Yeah. But I mean, the, the sport, yeah. the sport also goes back and forth. Right now. The sport I talked goes to him back last night. <laughs> it was just a lot of grunts. <laughs> <Mers. laughs> it was at a truck stop in Tracy. I don't want to talk about it. So UFC fight nights. Hunts versus Brazil, or excuse me, Hunt versus Bigfoot going down that happened in Australia. We had that happen on Friday. Yes. What's uh, your description of it again, Joey? I don't remember my description of it. I believe you said two unconditioned, fat, heavyweight fighters throwing rapidly at each other with no technique. Technique. That was pretty much 100% accurate. No. No. <laughs> Those elbows even, were perfect. Technique. Are you serious right now? Like your 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 recap of my description is what the fight was. All right, 100%. let's start out at the prelims. Well, so wait, Alex Garcia. How the defeated. fuck can you argue with that? <laughs> really? We'll get to that. We'll get to it. There Alex, five rounds. I'm surprised I was so fucking spot on with that. <laughs> Alex Garcia defeated Ben Wall. Christoph Jotko defeated Brian Bruno Santos. Justin Scoggins defeated Richie Vakuk. Cal Magalis defeated Nick Ring. How much did you dance around your living room when Nick Ring got beat? I was laughing. <laughs> I was at work and I was laughing. Uh, Mizugaki defeated Nam Fan. Yeah. Uh, Nam Fan just could not pull yeah, the trigger do in that anything. fight at all. Beth Korea defeated Julie Kenzie, and as a result, Julie Kenzie has decided to retire. Really? Yes. She said she's been in the sport for a very long time. Um, she's already done enough. I mean, she you know she was in the sport before it was. Big for women's MMA. She was she's been around for a long time. Pussy. <laughs> she actually talked to her coach and said, "At the they end, are what they eat. Regardless, oh! regardless, allegedly before the win or loss, she decided this was going to be her last MMA fight. She would have loved to go on a win, but oh well. Really, if she would have won, she's going to retire. Yep. Bullshit. She I call said, such uh, bullshit on that. She's still going to be involved in MMA for the rest of her life." She takes time to accept. Uh, I can give more to support by stepping back and taking a role to help develop other fighters. All right. Well, she can go coach then. <laughs> That's Whatever. it. Whatever. There's still announcer jobs in Invicta. That's true. I'm glad we're pronouncing it right now. 
by the way. Invicta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, before we were adding an extra I, a yeah. couple T's. Just made no big deal. Clint Hester defeated Dylan Andrews. Sal Palele knocked out Pat Berry. You were so sad. So sad. You were so sad. I actually saw it like a... Uh, I got... Okay, I'm sorry. I have to say this. Go ahead. I, I owe this to the people listening. I have to apologize for talking shit about the women in the tough finale for being muffin-topped over the top of their spandex because this fucking fight... <laughs> Sal Palele was a big, big dude. And I talked, oh, I can only think of a couple guys in the UFC that, are, that aren't cut when they come in the cage. Sal Palele. Yeah, Sal Palele. No, <laughs> no, my God. Yeah. And Antonio. Big Country was yeah. one of my, was one of my Hunt, examples, you know. We'll get there. Anyway, yeah. not until Pat Barron actually saw. Um, I apologize. Of, on the UFC Tonight Show, after the, the after show, uh, Karen Bryant was like, yeah, we just ran into him in the backstage locker room. And all he's sitting there doing is saying, I can't let this keep happening. <laughs> Pat Barry getting knocked out. Steve really? Talking to his trainers like, well, I can't let this keep happening. Like, <laughs> he just keeps getting knocked out. He needs to drop weight. I don't know if he's going to be in the UFC much longer. No, no it's, it's the I button thing. Biggest, it's just biggest like heart in the world. One of the best, nicest guys. Really Absolutely. funny. Uh, obviously a character. Amazing kickboxing. He's too short to fight at heavyweight. Like I said, I compare this to, this is, this is the Jeff Monson of strikers in the heavyweight division. The guy's 5'4". Cannot get in within the reach and just gets knocked out and can nothing. Have you put Jeff Monson, <laughs> Jeff Monson and Pat me, Barry man. together? They would be the greatest heavyweight ever. Would that be, would that be technically? But I think you'd would have that to be stack technically them on top midget because... wrestling. That's midget in wrestling in the trench coat, like we were talking about. Pat right? Barry takes a year off, comes back at two hundred five. He, he's a completely different fighter. Different fighter. Fight. Ryan Defe- Bader defeated Anthony Peroche. Peroche couldn't do anything. No. Anything no, it was, it in was this fight stopped at every every tr- everything he tried to do. He just <laughs> Shogun, who are looking like the old Shogun, seriously oh, knocked him. out James Tahuna in a minute three seconds. Is this his first back to back victory in a while? Uh, no, he's coming off of a loss. He just lost Chill Sun and oh, he got sorry, choked okay. unconscious. So no, if mistake. he puts together another win, he might have back to back since I think 2010. I thought we talked about back to back victories last time. That's why. I yeah, he hasn't that. had one. Yeah. Well, then, <laughs> then, then there we go. <laughs> But I love that it was a short left hand instead of this wide looping like he's used to. It looks like he's actually working more on his technical boxing instead of the shoot box. I'm just going to throw wildly hands. Yeah. It was actually really good to watch. It was. It was. I honestly thought that was better than the main event. Main whatever. event, Mark Hunt, Antonio, <laughs> Bigfoot Silva, comes to a majority draw. Right. One judge scored it 48-47 for Hunt. The other two judges, 47-47, draw. If I was to score that Here fight, honestly, I would... the scorecard you can see... Oh, that was a Scantron. No, that's a scorecard, sir. That's a scorecard. One judge scored rounds... It's um, like a fucking timesheet. One and four for Silva, and then scored the rest for Hunt, all 10-9. That's the judge who gave it to Hunt. Now, the rest of the two judges, the other two judges, scored it the same. Uh, they gave rounds one, two, and four, 10-9 to Silva. They gave round three, 10-9 to Hunt. And then round five, they gave 10-8 to Mark Hunt. Ah, really? Round and three, that huh? Is why I almost gave ten, th- ten, eight to round three. Yeah, I could, I could see that. It didn't. I don't, I don't know. It just at the time when I was watching the fight, I didn't think of a ten, eight round. But at the same time, I, I mean, I said this after it happened. I, I honestly thought if you were scoring this from a judge's perspective, the way that we've seen judges score fights, uh, if you have to do it on a round by round basis, then Silva won that fight. But if you go per Uncle Dana's request of scoring it on damage, then Hunt obviously won that fight. I don't know. I, I definitely gave round three and five to Hunt, and I would give at least one of those, if not both of them, 10-8. That would still give you a pretty big lead going into what I think would be uh, the fourth round is the only round that I, I couldn't figure out. Because, yes, for the last minute, Bigfoot was on top of Hunt where they almost called the fight, but he, he made it through. But up until that point... It was all Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt was dominating on the feet in round four. Oh, I... Taking, I, taking Silva big time. And I honestly, I honestly only gave four and five to Hunt. Only four and five? Only you didn't four give and three? Five. I did not give three to Hunt. That's I where I thought he was almost the most dominant was in round three. I, I'm pretty sure... I Maybe I have to go back and rewatch it, but I'm pretty sure I only... I know I only gave two rounds to Hunt. Yeah. Uh, and and the, other, the other three to Silva... And Round based, one and two, I definitely gave to Silva. And I well, mean. based on the UFC scoring and the, all the controversy yeah. that's been happening lately, I think that if you base it on the way they score everything, then you had to give the fight to Silva. But if Dana wants to change everything to damage, then then Hunt won the fight hands down. So I'm cool with the draw. Yeah, I'm cool. In with fact, it. everybody said um, that it's a possibly the greatest heavyweight fight of all time. But look, this is what's shitty about B, this. B, it's possibly fight of the year. 
And both guys said they don't want a rematch, that they're okay with it being pretty even as it was, and they're okay with it being a draw. Dana White said it was probably one of the greatest fights he's ever seen. Why? And that, and that he gave them both their win money and would possibly buy them their buy own them private island. islands. But if you have, <laughs> so you have two absolutely terrible fucking fighters throwing leather at each other and it looks good because they both you didn't fucking see any suck. Technique. You saw no technique in that entire fight. I saw Are one. I saw one high kick from Mark Hunt. One. Who says one, you have to have, be a high kick? One. You have technique. You didn't see any technical hands. You they didn't see any. They're trained. They should have some kind of minimal technique. They're trained. Oh, I've seen but plenty of fighters far, not throw jack shit in technique and just as, do haymakers. As, look at Leonard Garcia. The fuck that. I'm talking about heavyweight. In the heavyweight <laughs> what division. What do you mean? Let's look at Hendricks. How many times did he just wing that? Why well, throw that arm? That that's, that's, no, right. there's there's absolutely no way this is fight of the year. There's absolutely no way this is one of the best heavyweight fights of all time. You had two <laughs> mediocre to shitty fighters throwing leather at each other for five fucking. They're both in the top ten of their weight class. That's so great. Apparently, so, they're really shitty. So, so Mark Hunt was able to. He came in with a fucking negative <laughs> record. Are you kidding me right now? No, don't he's defend, on a record. Don't fucking defend Mark Hunt. Dude was even at one point in the UFC. <laughs> he was like fucking four and four. He also had the greatest and, win streak in the heavyweight division. And Bigfoot <laughs> Silva was a fucking joke before he came over to the UFC. Okay. Oh, because What's his elite XC championship fight? didn't count. What? His Elite XC Championship. No, count. it doesn't count. <laughs> the who, the what? No, it doesn't count. You, All other belts don't count. Elite XC that folded, that is gone because they were a joke of an organization. I think they were pretty legit uh, at the time. They had the no. first women's MMA bout on TV. You're going to say that was a joke? What the fuck is that with Bigfoot Silva? <laughs> You're saying the organization is a joke? I'm telling you right now, I hate Ronda Rousey. She could beat both these motherfuckers. <laughs> she would arm by the fuck out of Mark Hunt and Bigfoot Silva. That's what I'm saying. These guys are not... Neither one of them are good fighters. They are not good fighters. They're on par with Tim fucking Sylvia, dude. I think that's worse. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Arturo Gotti and Mickey Ward weren't the greatest fighters, but yet... They put on some of the greatest, the greatest boxing fights, fights of, all of all time. That's what I'm saying. If you have... Okay, so you have two of the fucking slowest people on the planet, and they race each other. Oh, it's a fucking great race. They're neck and neck. Someone it's fell? slow as fuck. Yes. <laughs> it's slow as fuck. You know, it's... it's, it's hey, I'm, I'm not the one that said I wanted to buy him a fucking island. <laughs> and uh, that guy sees fights all the time. It's true. He's playing to the fans. No, but what, but what fights are better? Yeah, well, heavyweight, heavyweight fights fight are better. better. Give us a better heavyweight fight. I look. All I'm saying, look, what, what I'm saying, like huh? Stephen uh, Stephen Bonner, uh, is that a fight? Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin. That's light heavyweight. That's light heavyweight. Move listen, up one weight class. Listen to me. Listen to me. Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin put on the fight that saved the UFC. Okay. Go back and watch that fight today. Neither, both these guys, we've called them fucking pillow hands. We've called both like we've we've picked them to well, we lose saw that fights. Rematch and it was horrible. Exactly. So exactly. in the heavyweight division, what's the greatest heavyweight? Okay. Fight of so all what time? he's saying is that even though it was the greatest fight and it saved the UFC, it was two guys who didn't have any. Any technique. technique. No, they had technique, but the fight was shitty. And, shitty, and the right. fighters were obviously not as good as they were touted okay, to be. Okay, but back to argument A, which was <laughs> name a I would take Cain Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos over this fight. Are you kidding me? Are you, as a better fight? As a better fight. As a one-sided fight? As a better fight. Overall, really? The last time they met, yes. I, I got to see, to me, that's way too one-sided. Uh, way too one-sided. I want to fight that's going back and forth. So you have two guys who are equally mediocre in the cage. How is that a fucking amazing fight? <laughs> They did it better than every other, but he oh, that was amazing. Jesus. <laughs> it's just because there was blood and nobody was hand. Look at his hand. I don't want to look at his... What, what does he have, a golf ball in there? Yeah, look at that break right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, chime in with yours. We're at uh, splitdecisionmma at gmail.com. Email <laughs> us. Tell us what you think. <laughs> oh, God. Moving on. UFC on Fox 9 yeah. tomorrow. Tomorrow. I will be cage side. Tomorrow. Live on our tomorrow. Twitter. I'll be looking for you on the TV. SD. Do you have our cards? Did MMA. you have any cards? Yeah, I, I have to get one. them remade. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> this is going down in Sacramento. Um, this is the first time they've been in Sacramento since UFC 73. It's been a long, long and time. And WEC 48. UFC has not been back since 73, and overall the company has not been back since WEC 48 when Aldo destroyed Faber's legs and took the belt from him. So uh, check out the interviews first off. Go back and, and look for the other podcast because we interviewed almost the entire card for this. <laughs> Doors are going to be at noon. The first fight is at 1. It goes Why live is so early? because it's on Fox. Okay. So it goes live on Fox Sports 1 with the undercard at 2 o'clock. Main card will start at 5 p.m. on Fox. Okay. So We have lost a lot of good fights. Uh, due to injury that Seriously. was supposed to be on this card. Anthony Pettis, Josh Thompson got pulled. Carlos Condit, Matt Brown got pulled. So Jamie Varner got pulled off this fight. John Moraga got pulled out of this fight. Ian McCall and John Dodson both got pulled out of this fight. So it should be done in about 30 minutes is what you're saying? Yeah, there's not that many fights. Like, I was pretty... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to go to the prelims? We'll start with uh, Darren 
Uni Niyama. As long as we're good on time, let's roll. Alpo's Oze Oz Killick. Uh, what do you think? Eight and four going against eight and one. Ozelik is making his UFC debut. Um, he has coming off of his 15 second knockout over Antonio Bonuelos. He's on a three fight streak. He is a junior college all American wrestler. Benuelos, um, I like Benuelos. <laughs> Uh, Darren I'll, is obviously very I'm going to go with Alp on this one. I'm going to go with Darren Inumana. Uh He is coming off of his loss to Bill Joseph Benavides, but I do believe he has good submissions and a very good ground game. Alp is Alps like the mountains. Yeah, very nice. Therefore, he will win. <laughs> Roger Bowling, 11-4, going up against Abel Trullo. Again, this is a rematch from UFC 20, UF Ultimate Fight Night 27, when Abel landed the illegal knee, ending in a no contest. Uh, up to that point, Bowling was winning this fight. Um, he had the better wrestling and conditioning. I think it's going to be the same thing all yeah. over again. As long as another illegal knee does not land. Yeah, no, I like bowling in this fight, too. All right. Sam Stout going up against Cody McKenzie. Cody McKenzie, I am scared for your life. <laughs> uh, I understand you have a great guillotine. You've been working on your hands. But you do not have good hands, as good of hands as Sam Stout, who has very heavy hands. He doesn't uh, have heavy hands. He has hands. They're not heavy. They're hands of stone, sir. Who the fuck does he knock out? <laughs> hands of stone. Shit. He <laughs> that can knock nickname. out a parakeet. Ne- next day. Actually, <laughs> he just... He, he did win by knockout in his last fight. He Against fought, a parakeet? No, he fought... Uh, <laughs> oh, what is his name? It was a cockatoo. <laughs> it, now it was I can't a remember. cockatoo. It was a cockatoo. He has good kickboxing. It's just, he has improved wrestling. I'll be taking Sam's Oh, this is day. such a coin flip for me because uh, Cody really? McKenzie could get a... He, he could easily get a, a McKenzie team on, on Stout. And Sam Stout could sit there and punch him with pillow hands for three rounds, too. I, who knows? I think we need to bring some of these fighters in here to hit you and see how pillow hands they are. <laughs> Fine. And submit you. Or you can try to submit them. See how easy it is. Fine. <laughs> Answer the call. Zach Bukowski. Going I'm like up talking against- shit from behind my microphone. <laughs> going up against Scott Jorgensen. Scott making his 125-pound debut after losing his last three at 135 pounds. Uh, but he had really good power at 135, and I'm hoping that transfers into the 125-pound division. He's very fast. He's a very good wrestler. Zach uh, had belts in other organizations that have folded that do not count, I guess, according to Joey. Right? Yes. Bellator. He had, a, he had a belt. He had a belt in Bellator. Does that count? No. He doesn't count. No. His Resurrection Fighting Alliance belt that doesn't count. No. Nope. Okay. Well, he had belts in other organizations. Hey, so. fucking Tim Tebow was going to be the big thing in the NFL. What happened? He's going to be a fucking commentator for college football. <laughs> so there you go. They offered him a Canada League, an Italian League, and I think a. Uh, some other one because that matters. No, the Canadian league. They turned him down. Yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, he couldn't even handle a hundred yard field. It's 120 up there. I'm gonna take Scott Jorgensen in this fight. I know he's tenacious. He's got a lot of wrestling power. I agree with you there. That's fine. <laughs> Bobby Green going up against Pat Healy. Pat Healy is 29 and 17. He's 0 and 2 in the UFC. He was gonna be 1 and 2 in the UFC, or excuse me, 1 and 1 in the UFC, but he smoked pot and uh, ended up getting his fight taken away from him that he won. Bobby Green won the last. Fight with a controversial KO. We saw him kick the the belt line, get a KO or excuse me TKO fight. Um, we know that he did really well against wrestlers like Volkman. Healy has a very grinding style. Who do you think is going to win? I don't Everybody's know. phone's going off. Are we on the air? I know. What's going on? <laughs> Are we live right now? Uh, is this is this Bobby Hood Green? Bobby Hood Green. Bobby Hood Green. Yeah. I'll go with you on that one. Edson Barbosa going up against Danny Castillo. You took Barbosa. I'm fight? taking Barbosa in this fight. Danny Castillo has won five of his last six. He has good hands. He has been training with uh, Team Alpha Bell for quite some time. Obviously, with Bang Ludwin making big changes over at that camp. Right. Um, and everybody we talk to, that's all they talk about is how Bang Ludwin has turned around that camp completely. They finally have a coach. They said they never really had a head coach yep. for a long time. But Edson Barbosa, man, this guy can finish a fight with leg kicks alone. He has finished three fight. fights with leg kicks, and a wrestler standing there trying to get a takedown getting leg kicked. It's going to be tough, That's man. where I think Danny Castillo is going to win this But though. I think because Castillo likes to stand now, that's where I think it's going to be a problem for him. Which is and always... And he stole my nickname of last call. I'm a bartender. You're not. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Last Call Dodge. <laughs> you have a cool enough last name. You don't need a fucking nickname. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think Danny Castillo is going to win this by simply going for the takedown when Edson Barboza goes for the leg kicks. All right. If, if he can't if he can't secure the takedown off the leg kicks, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. But like you said, the kryptonite for wrestlers is when they all of a sudden decide they're a stand up fighter. fighter. Yeah. yeah. Matt Hughes. Uh, Court McGee going up against Ryan LaFleur. Josh Koscheck, Koscheck Rashad Jared. Evans, <laughs> Diego Sanchez. <laughs> Court McGee going up against Ryan LaFleur. Uh, Court, we know, is for his grinding style and his endless gas tank. He's got a good chin. He's got pretty good defense. Ryan sets a very fast pace. Uh, I think he'll be definitely looking for lots of takedowns, even though he's pretty decent on the feet. Overall, though, I just think Court McGee is a little bit better in all of those aspects and will win this fight. I can't root against Court McGee, man. I'm with you. 
Joe Lozon going up against Mac Danzig. J. Lau lost his last fight to a really bad one-sided beating to Michael Johnson where he just didn't look like he was himself. Um, but he kept coming forward, and you got to give it to that. And he does have accurate boxing and good submissions. He uses that boxing to set up his submissions. Danzig has good clinch work. He's decent, underrated Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's he keeps good, good pressure on top, Good, good sweeps and cr- scrambles, and apparently he is, uh, you know, in variety, or what is it, vegan life or lifestyles Vegans or whatever the, the hell it is. One of the top vegan athletes ever. <laughs> whatever you subscribe like to. I don't know. <laughs> I'm taking Joe Lau. Uh, you're right. Joe Lau, he, he fights like it's a chess match, and he's very smart on his feet, and he does use his, his punching for, for his submission attempts. And i got to assume if he gets on the ground, as long as McDantic doesn't wet blanket him, yeah. then Joe Lau's going to be able to pull off a submission, hopefully. Hopefully. So we got Chad Money Mendez going up against Nick Lentz. Nobody gave Nick Lentz a time of day in the press conference. No, board. they had asked him two yeah. questions. He sat there alone, kind of pissed off that nobody was talking to him. It was pretty funny. I mean... What do you expect? Some guy behind me was like, I thought that guy was Canadian. (laughs) Who is that guy? (laughs) I was laughing. Is that Cole Miller? Yeah, who is that? (laughs) Nick Lentz is good in the clinch. He has good takedowns, good ground and pine. Ground and pound, but everybody complains that... That's cool. I ground and pine, too. Yeah, ground and pine. Everybody complains that he uh, is not an exciting fighter. He just is a grinder. He's very boring. Whereas Chad Money Mendez is not. Uh, His only loss is to Jose Aldo. That's pretty big. It's a huge deal. He's been a man on a mission since his last fight. We, we Good spoke, striking. We spoke with half the Alpha Male team this week, and we did ask him about the tenacity and how amazing it is that everybody comes out of that camp. They strive to put on amazing fights. Yep. They do not let go. They are relentless when they get in that cage. The thing is, too, is that even though Nick is really good wrestling, Chad Mendez has not been taken down in his WC or UFC career. And he has heavy hands. He was the first guy ever to put down uh, Clay Guida, who had never been stopped in 43 fights. Right. That says a lot. I think Nick Lentz is going to get murked. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> are you taking Nick Lentz or are you taking Mendez? I'm taking Mendez. <laughs> Uriah Faber, 29 and 6, going up against Michael Mayday McDonald, 16 and 2. Uriah Faber has only lost three fights since 2010. Mm-hmm. All of them have been when the belt is on the line. Uh, we know he is good in the scramble. We know he's good in wrestling. His stand up is getting better working with Bang Ludwig. He loves to mix it up. He always, he, he's always creative in the cage. He's getting a little on the older side. He is the oldest fighter on this card. Mm. Mind you, he's only 34. <laughs> I'm 34. Yeah. <laughs> Look what he's done. I know. <laughs> so depressed now. Michael McDonald, good striking. Your Ryan Faber's making a, you know, millions of dollars a year and has a butt chin. I'm just fat and doing a podcast. <laughs> Michael McDonald, heavy, heavy hands. We know he has knockout power. He has good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He does like to counterpunch most of his his punches, even his heavy ones. Really good feints. We both know that he's not a volume striker, though. He throws a couple one-two combos, right. looks for that heavy hand. Uh, I think this is going to be a really, really close fight, especially you know in a firefight. Like, these guys are going to get really close because they don't have reach on each other. And they don't throw any – both of them don't throw any more than a couple combos. Right. I think it's going to be a quick few real up close. I am not picking anybody in this fight. I, I think this is going to be a big <laughs> a big wake-up call for Mikey, finding somebody who is explosive as, as Uriah Faber and his experience. As a lot Faber of people is. are giving an edge to Mikey just because of his age and has the ability to learn from his fights. It's it's very it's difficult. Mikey said it in the interview when he said, I've put hands on everybody I've fought. Yeah. It all comes down to how Uriah Faber handles that. Yep. If it rocks him, if Mikey touches him and it rocks him, then you might as well count your eye favor out for the rest of the fight. It could go to decision. It could go, it go all the way. I think it's going to go decision. I but, really if, but if he gets rocked by a punch, if he gets rocked in the first round by a punch, then you have to side with with Mikey on this one. However, uh, Uriah Faber is he's pretty tenacious and he'll keep it working. And he's going to come at, at Mikey from angles that he's never even seen before. See, that's uh, what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that we're going to have to see we're going to have to see some stuff from Mike that we've never seen him do before. Yeah. And and that's going to be that's going to be I I guess I'm kind of biased in in several ways, but. You know, Oaksdale MMA is not necessarily a great ground camp. No. Uh, they they don't have that reputation. Whereas Team Alpha Male now he has been winning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournaments. I mean, he's you know, he's and a that, brown belt. It's yes. not like he's and that, has no Jiu Jitsu. That accounts for a lot. But MMA Jiu Jitsu and and Matt Jiu Jitsu are two different things. And Uriah Faber has been doing this a long time, and and the ground pressure he's going to put on Mikey from the wrestling and from his experience in jiu-jitsu, uh, and as young as Mikey is, is going to present a big problem for him. Uh, as long as Uriah Faber can can stay away from getting tagged on the chin by Mikey, Uriah Faber could easily win a decision in this fight. But Mikey has the has the power to stop this fight at any time. Yeah. So it, it is very difficult to pick a pick a winner in this fight, especially because they're both local. So I'm not going to. I'm either. not going to pick a fight. Anybody else in the room? Who are you taking? Cardio. I'll take McD. 
Johnny Cardio. I'm taking McD. Favor. I'm going to go with Favor. I'm going McD. Split. Split. <laughs> I think Life this, decision. Let's just call <laughs> split decision on this fight then and move on to Demetrius Johnson over Joseph Benavidez. Uh, Joseph Benavidez, also from Team Alpha Male, fought tough competition to uh, to come back. He's got heavy hands like you wrote over here. Uh, he, he's got uh, obvious improvement with a bang. They both have cardio for days. Needs to use his jabs to catch Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson. Who is incredibly fast. In oh, yeah. their last fight, he won a split decision, but he outstruck him. He outtook him down. He mixed it up well. He's very good in the clinch. He is very, very fast. He uses angles very, very well. Mm-hmm. That's where I think Mighty Mouse will have the edge. However, I would like to see Joseph Benavidez win. I think he definitely, training with Bang Ludwig, has uh, put a lot into it, and I think he possibly could take this fight and upset the champion. It's entirely possible, but i got to stick with the champ, Demetrius Johnson. I think this guy has what it takes to, to retain the belt for a few more fights uh, simply because he's so explosive, and he, he really knows what he's doing once he gets inside the cage. He, he really does. Benavidez, he's, he's going to put him to work for sure. Oh, definitely put him to work. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think when it comes down to, and it's I, I, it's entirely possible this goes to the, the judge's decision as well, yep. uh, I think it's going to favor If it goes to decision, it's definitely going Johnson. Yeah, it's going to go to the champ. And then uh, from there we go. What? That's, that's the main it. event. That's your okay. main event. That's your title fight. They're just so they're so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you notice, the card drops from one fifty five to one forty five to one thirty five to one twenty five. Crazy. Going up. Yeah, this is the lightest crazy. the lightest fight in a while. Yeah. Ever since uh, Condit and Matt Brown dropped the uh, couldn't fight on the card, this became the lightest UFC card in well, that I can remember. And so, they're gonna add, they're gonna add a lighter weight, right? No, no, they they. I don't. I don't think they'll ever add. 115. Are they just gonna fucking have ghosts and flyweight? I don't fighting? think they'll ever add flyweight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I, the 115 women's. Yes, 115 men's. I don't think they'll ever add. This it's is. Not, it's not strong enough yet. No, no, they're not strong enough. Flyweight or uh, it's like flea weight or straw weight or something straw like that. Yeah. No, it's called eating disorder weight. <laughs> you go that way. Anyway, big thanks for listening. Uh, really appreciate it. Check us out on Fight Fans Radio Network, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and of course their iTunes account, Fight Fans Radio Network. Once again, official KOA.com. The uh, Rock, the Rock ninety six seven. Where am I at here? The Split Decision sponsor, of course. Uh, Knockout Artist Clothing. <laughs> Don't shake your head. <laughs> I will be at the fights live and tweeting, and hopefully on Facebook updating. I won't give a play by play because people get pissed off when I fill you their, flood feed. their timelines. I flood the timeline with a, and a punch to the left, and a punch to the right, and a kick. <laughs> and a kick body blow, body blow, body I, blow. Yeah. <laughs> spamming head kick, spamming head kick. <laughs> Put him in a body bag, Johnny. Come on. <laughs> Sweep the I, leg. I will put up uh, the results and anything else that I kind of happen to see there. Various opinions you have on the fights. Of course. Of course, yeah. Like the guy that was yelling behind me the last time that was like, just do it. Just do it. I'm like, they're taking a break. Just, <laughs> we don't even have a fight going on right now. Just like, during, during a prelim fight, just yell sweep the leg the entire time. Just, or yeah, flying let's, knee. Let's one just of get kicked two. out. That'd be great. No, okay, don't do that. <laughs> uh, so, officialkoa.com. They fit fighters, fight fans, and fight personalities alike. You got to check them out. When in doubt, knock them out. And splitdecisionmma.com. Bueller and Dodge signing off from the official KOA studios. Uh, and it's pretty much it. Have a good night. We'll see you at the fights. Done.